Now, time to do uh, one little quick let's play of this of Disney game made by Capcom. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. So let's just start the game with yeah. You can choose a character, but it doesn't matter. And there's the main characters. That was the plot. Weirdness. So, and the basic gameplay is simple. You pick up stuff, you can throw stuff, you walk around, you jump, and I can say that this game's level of difficulty, even though the NES games have quite well deserved reputation of being quite hard, this is of the more, uh, I'd say, later era of NES uh, from the transition phase between well well this was not an early NES game mostly because it does have quite complex structures of of visual styling and all that so yeah but the basic moves are simple whichever character you chose plays the same so there's no difference you can pick up boxes throw them duck ducking is quite useless mostly because it doesn't usually work so well as a way to avoid perils it's usually just easier to jump over the peril instead of ducking so oh yeah and well Basic platforming style, and of course you can throw a rock, heavy block in the air and get get yourself hit with it, which is quite fun. Oh yeah, and out of the boxes or crates or however you want to call it, you can pick only one of them, but you can duck beneath them, which makes you well, if enemy runs into you while you're ducked behind behind it, with uh, inside it, it's gonna become. Well, it's gonna hit the enemy, so yeah, and you don't get damaged, so it's quite handy. Trick, trick. And there's usually quite lots of boxes, so you can pick it up. And just picking up the cheese, Monty comes up and opens the path to our first boss, which is some sort of weird robot shooting stuff from its hands. And that was a miss. And every boss fight has this red ball that you use to damage them. And after every zone, there's a bit of a bonus game. Ha ha ha! I ya! Well, that was just a. Yeah, the main plot is about to. It has now been revealed. Yeah, yeah, that's Fat Cat. He's he, he was stupid because he told he told us exactly where to go. But and well, what would you expect from a bad guy? You know, they they don't usually are they usually aren't so smart, especially if they are voiced by J great Jim Cummings. He's a great great voice great VA great voice actor. And of course, some levels are more horizontal, some levels are more vertical. This one had a bit of horizontal segment at the first. And of course, the enemies are throughout the quite basic style. Nothing too complex. Some sort of weird, glidey things. And already, that was a three level. And I already beat it up to a new boss, which is a some sort of bird. And if you hold the B button while you're 
while the ball is coming at you, you're gonna, you can actually grab it right from the air. Which makes it quite that much easier to avoid being, to make things faster. And I intend to do this, uh, not the fastest rate, I see, I checked that the record speed is something like 12 minutes in this game. Yeah, that's called radio. Yeah, well, I already so I already got it. Yeah, and I could avoid either of them, but I'm not. I'm gonna go through all the stages just to show them that. Capcom at this era had some really good so skills about, well, I think that even without the use of licensed Disney characters, this would have been a very solid game. Oh, damn it. It uh, mostly because controls are quite, are quite slick, level of difficulty is not particularly bad, uh, and you could say that the presentation, that's a fine word, is not bad at all. It, it of course ain't perfect, mostly because it's short and quite short. Not, well, not so short, but it's very, e and it's e very easy. So this game is a counter argument to the stating that in every NES game has, is a bloody hard of something Dark Souls hardcore level game, at least of platformers. Well, NES does have very tough platformers. But this one isn't one of them. I remember that during the ancient era, when there were stores that or stores that you were able to rent video games, mostly because they were on very heavy, say uh, not necessarily very heavy, but very durable uh, cartridges, making that form of business viable, which ceased to be when the CDs came out and they were they aren't so sturdy. Uh, well, CD era made that kind of business quite much impossible to do, mostly because of you know, CDs break easily. And having the game go to go through something like that, 20 different players, ooh, not necessarily every one of them was the most neatest handler of them. You would really need a sturdy technology, but I remember that uh, we rented, obviously my parents rented this game for me, and I actually beat it right on that fir first and only renting of this game. So it's a bit of, so it, it's interesting tidbit of past, and I just, one more boss, some sort of weird ass space alien ship. That was a lucky hit. Oh, a nice, a double hit. That was a nice maneuver. Uh, and one thing which I am not showing in this game is that the, it has simultaneous multiplayer in it with, with, of course, all the possible things that you can... Well, as it it has the a chance that you can cause some all kinds of havoc to the other player, and this level's theme is some sort of libra librarian. But you could say that this game is of the fast pace and fast pace and nice game and quite fast pacing and quite simple quite easy level of difficulty. It does have quite a bit of trickier parts of in level design, but mostly you could say that this game is not of the difficult ki kind. And the enemies usually are quite sim simple. And, and strangely enough in this stage there's a chance to at least it was in few places possible to uh, for me to get backwards walking on stage, but this follows the basic stage that 
method method methodology of and you really need to plan your moves ahead because once you throw the whatever block or stuff you are holding it gives you a bit of stun or delay from the throw making it quite making those very twitch throws that you need to that you might have to use not so not so possible so meaning that it might lead to exchange of attacks and of course when the enemies are much more numerous than you that's bad although you can take two hits before that one kills you over yeah there was no boss on this stage but it had much more a bit of a trickier platforming uh, and Yeah, you already did. Yep, and I really don't know why the game. Well, of course it give make it makes that game a bit more interesting when you don't have to progress to the with the same way. But at the same time, it makes it even shorter a bit when you don't have to get through every stage, and also makes it so that the basic gameplay doesn't really change. So there is no really incentive to get through every st stage except of course the obvious one of oh damn I got hiccups of wanting to see all every stage and of course the obstacles also follow the quite simple theming of well these characters are small so there's all kinds of small things like model trains and all that are ha happening yeah and the enemies and even these kind of enemies which don't even well, a burly looking bird with, with a talent of smacking things with his wings. Really weird thing, plates of anatomy. Well, gameplay in this game is good, but it is not the most challenging game, of course. And this, uh, like many other Disney games of this era, it, it bases, bases on a cartoon series which I don't remember watching much, so I really can't tell much of anything except, well, later I found, learned that uh, Jim Cummings did the voice of primary antagonistic fat cat, so most like, all, but most likely the most prominent antagonist fat cat, but that is, well, that's a completely different tale, and it's really interesting to notice that the, uh, at least some actors, like late great Vincent Price, thought it to be a very great honor for an actor to be cast in a, in a Disney animation. At least, uh, well, he was cast in a, in a feature-length anima animated film, so so it must have been a bit different. Yeah, and this boss. Looked intimidating, but it wasn't, and it had a big flashy wounding spot. Yeah, Vincent Price considered his favorite role to be a what was it? Pro Professor Radigan in, in Great Mouse Detective. He considered that to be his pinnacle of his career, which, which is of course quite nice. At least way, way to see that they are, how the actor appreciates their work. That it might not be the most prominent or the appealing role it might be something completely different performance from which which they consider their best even though they, it might not be their most renowned or maybe not even their most best but they might consider it to be their most important or the one they are most proud of like i didn't do the checking beforehand but david prowse the guy who did the body language of the darth vader when he when he was cool and awesome character or was at least awesome character considered they so what was it it was something like a some sort of uh, traffic sing tra tra traffic educational film clip or was something that he considered his most best and proud 
roll, which is really interesting. Oh, doesn't that look nice? Graphics in this game are really good. Uh, even though, in a sense, they are simplistic, they are good. They, look, they are very clear, and this is the only time in this game this hammer gimmick is used, which is really strange because they programmed this in, yet it appears only in one stage. Which isn't even comp something you have to get play through anyways. So it's a really weird things in this game. Oh yeah, that, that, that yeah, they was considered a what was it something like a tra tra traffic guidance personality from some instructional movie to be his most important role. In a sense, understandable. Instead of Darth Vader or any other big, bulky, scary dudes. And Frank Langella considers Skeletor will be his favorite role, and it's not even a bit. And he's not even having to think about that selection, but he, 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 he just considers it straight away, no, no problem. And that boss was really easy, mostly because the hit stun is just so bad you can get two hits with one swing throw. Yeah, that, it was some weird spark spewing fish. And one ups come uh, come to me, it dropped to me like rain rain drops from the sky. Yeah, actually no, they don't change size. They come from they come from one direction to another, making one of the first real platforming challenges in this game. So it's really interesting to notice that that there, there are plenty of you could say that the sim simultaneous multiplayer, even though it has been a long part of video gaming, most likely since the, at least the second generation, which is to say NES. There is there isn't so many games which actually implemented it so w really well. And this uh, mostly because hey, it just allowed the players chances to dick around and cause immense amount of heart heartache to it, to each other. And uh, so yeah, these are the shape changing pipes. Oh damn it! My mistake. I should have jumped. Yeah, but luckily there's all the all these crates around here as well, which do not change shape and remain floating so they work as a nice platform so you have to get the screen scroll upwards so you can really make use of these places uh, jump yeah this was easy and luckily there's quite plenty of time for you to get through all these places yep yep and through that's more nerve, no, nerve wracking and a bit of challenging set stage so no boss fight even though boss fights always are in a separate room so dying in them isn't so bad Yeah, well, I am at the casino, all right, and I already way e way past the midway point of this game. Although I do say that the game does get more difficult near the end, so actually with actually some real platforming enemy challenges, mostly because you have very limited ways to defend yourself. You can just basically just grab the box, hide beneath it, and all that, and it doesn't even protect you against projectiles, only against the enemies. So, yeah. And this one... Oh, damn it. There's also some weird ways how the game world interacts with you, like this, these just raise up and lift you. But hey, stars, flowers, tackling, tackle happy, rhinoceri. Is that the, is that the plural of that word, rhinoceri? Uh, one. Rhinoceros is the singular form, but 
Is it so that the rhinoceri is then the plural, or is it the rhino rhinoceros? Uh, I'm, I'm blurring up my words, and English is not my native language. Oh, I have gotten feedback that my English is quite good. Well, it certainly isn't stereotypical of my people, my people's English language skills. Although that stereotype is also, in a sense, quite affectionate, mostly because, hey, even it, it's about the delivery of the language, not so much about the level of vocabulary. And I'd say that the most, perhaps the most ancient documentations of fin Finnish person speaking English might be of the Helsinki Olympics of when the then president Pasekivi delivered his the opening speech to the Olympic Games in English and it was something that even the stereotypical Finnish English would be something that you, you know that sounds awful so it's, it's, it's in a sense quite hilarious although yeah I spoke about uh, fin Finnish language skills. Yep, yeah, this boss is simple. That's a big spray of bullets, which you don't need to care about at all because you can just stand still. But I want to look better. Much more scary a looking boss than actually being scary. Yep, take some flowers, catch it. Yeah, for a fat cat, he actually can, can, can go quite fast. But yeah, that's real fast if you have to chase somebody with a rocket. They are re going really fast. Nice little cutscene. Yay! Suborbital space flight. Why right, there's a galaxy there and a planet, I don't know. And a weird way to land with this rocket as well. And there's a still a boat. Three more stages. H, I, and J. And this game also game also got a sequel, but I can't really know much about it. Uh, you could say that the Capcom made a made a some sort of game version about quite much every animated show Disney had at well late 80s, not big early 90s. Uh, so, well, yeah, and of course, Doctors of them is the most most renowned, and for a good reason. That is a bloody good game. Although it ca it can be said that it's even sh as it's even older than it's even older than this one. It's even shorter. I uh, well, I played through that game, and, and I did a hundred percent gameplay through it before the best ending and the secret treasures, and it still didn't take long. Something like a half an hour, even that. Oh, damn it! Old fashioned thing. Enemy bumps you and throws you to the pit. And there's no checkpoints. So there's a bit of tricky things they put in, in here, mostly because. And why in hell is there some sort of weird green gunk at the bottom of the screen? I don't know what kind of level design quirk they had there, but it doesn't look too good. At least with, uh, with the contrast to the, the more nice, both the more like not so more nice, but more comprehensible blues, or at least more consistent blue. And of course, the silvery pipes you can jump through, but the. Uh, brass or yellowish or golden, however you want to say them, pipes do not. Uh, damn it, I'm in quite bad state. Yeah, you may actually lose your health quite fast if you man if you find yourself in a some kind of jam or however you want to call it. Yeah, you go away, you pest. Yay, checkpoint. Now I can die. And mostly the basic difficulty is much more in the observing of what's happening and 
not not being surprised mostly because in these later stages they do throw some few you could say I don't know could the word be curved balls or or some other other that kind of nasty surprises of enemy appearing right in front of you and you may and if you don't know that it's coming you most likely don't have a box or something carried and yeah I got through this and I do say that the, the more the animated series Disney did at the late 80s 90s I think my favorite is Darkwing Duck mostly because it it had it it was more mature in its tone uh, of course it 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 it, 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 it of course is quite as humor and silliness in it but basically it just it, it's it is just as silly as uh, well it is member of its basic genre not just regular disney animated series it's actually a complete Full, full member of its genre. Ah, these pelicans have a gimmick. They hurt your head if you throw them. So you have to throw them in a bit of an angle. And a new gimmick as well. Table fans spew pushing you back. Uh, of course, with, a, with some nice opportunity for you to learn how they work. And those pelicans, if you shoot them to the that ugly pouch of theirs, it's gonna just spit it right back. Ah, damn it, it's gonna be a bit of an annoyance to get through past that. Yeah, any hope for perfect run speed speed running is out of the picture. And that's a, and that thing has a, such a huge hitbox. It's most likely impossible to get managed to jump through over it. But luckily, that one didn't. Uh, it wasn't in a bad state. Although, how in hell have I, I'm still in a this state of? Yeah, the hitboxes are, are, are quite wonky. And Monty again, second time in the game. Most likely the last. Actually, that is the last time. So yeah, this game really does have that kind of feeling that it, it has lots of features and things in, put in, in programming into it which are then not used completely or as much as they could have been used, which I find to be a bit... Uh, yeah, I, could, I think the word is hasty in that uh, it tells her that they were in a hurry. And this must be one of the most tougher bosses of the game. The, what are the segmented world. It walks around looking nasty. Once you hit it, it goes to the middle, breaks apart, and those parts do hit you. But they are moving regular patterns, so there's a safe spot which I'm using right now. And like this, he goes down, second to last boss down. And of course what these bosses are, I have no idea. I just see them what they are. Even if I would be more familiar with, with the with the Chip and Dela animated series, I still most likely still wouldn't know anything anything about them. Level final stage with a unique music and some unique mechanisms as well, like conveyor belts of DOOM! So yeah, this is the, really, the final stage. With all the extra level, level gimmicks. And generally you could say that this is lo must, must be the longest stage of the game. I really don't know about that is the, is this the longest stage but it certainly is of the longest stage and it certainly is the toughest stage but Capcom did know how to do it soften the blow of sudden increase in difficulty by making a, it to have great music oh yeah these guys they look goofy and harmless they are not they take two hits 
which in this game means very much. And those axes of course are dangerous and that star over there is a bait. It's meant to lure you to take it so the axe blade can come and smack at you. And of course there's plenty of enemies and little of recovery. So that's the basic myth idea how, they, how this stage works. If you don't know what the perils coming up, you you are fucked badly, and not in a fun way either. You're just fucked in, a, in an unpleasant, painful, humiliating way. But oh, luckily there there was a bit of healing chunk. Oh yeah, and this is part where you really need to know that there's perils coming towards you. Because if you don't, well, you get killed. And I did know and I still got hurt. So, yeah. Difficulty, not so nice anymore. Although, this, you can... There's no, as there is no time limit or anything like that, you can... And the hitboxes are fucking weird. That clearly missed. Well... Well, doing my best to avoid them. Yeah. No, so the, you can see that the... These boxes of perils are usually bigger than you, or better say, your area that you can get hurt with is much larger than you actually are yourself. So that's uh, annoying. Alright, in a box. Boxes are good things for hiding. Especially if they are made from cardboard. That's from another great video game maker. Of, I'd say later era, although they did make games of this era as well, but not, not as really memorable ones than these Capcom managed to do, so... So yeah, that's a bit of a... So just Lob some boxes right in front, right in front of you. Let the enemies walk past you because hey, they are stupid. Yeah, now, now he throws it, and final boss. This pure cigar smoke, cigar smoke at me. That's rude. And he managed to beat me down before I managed to do anything. Yeah, Joe moves. He twirls his mustache. Yep, that's... And he's a... And I wanna look awesome. Yep, final boss beaten. He just flashed and disappeared. Easy game. With very pointless and silly ending with no animation or anything like that. Yeah, this game. Nice platforming, but very slow. Yeah, the end. Simple game, real nice. Simple episode. That's it. Until next time.